Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program for Beginners. Today we're going to be going to the moon. Now what you need to do is select the Kerbal X from the previously existing rockets and change the support struts to eject when the rockets fire. Now at this point I'm going to assume that you've already watched my video on how to get to orbit. If you have not, you can click the annotation right now. Alright, so what we're going to do first from orbit is we need to expand our orbit outwards so that we meet with the moon and we have an encounter. Now as you can see here I'm trying to find the moon, there we go, I found it. I'm going to make a maneuver node. Expand it outwards using the tools that I showed you last video. And you want to try and make it meet exactly with the moon's orbit. If it's not perfect, you can move it around a bit. Now you want to lead the moon much like you would when you lead someone when throwing a ball to them. Because the moon's going to orbit around as you try to move out to it. So as you can see, I've got a moon encounter there by simply expanding my orbit out. And I've led it by a, just under a quarter of the moon's orbit. Now, as you can see, if, if you do miss, you can move the node around, but usually you can get quite close to it, but you want to try and get the maneuver that requires the least amount of thrust to save as much fuel as possible. And I'm just going to warp around the planet here to make it a bit easier and less boring otherwise it would take several hours I think all right so once we get to this maneuver node we're gonna fire up and as usual we're gonna keep an eye on how much thrust our maneuver still needs in the bottom right next to the nav ball now the large booster on the Kerbal X is almost out of fuel so we'll have to eject it quite quickly after starting our thrust but the lander itself will have enough fuel to get to the moon and land. However, it will not have enough to get back. And that's the type of landing we're doing. It, it's a more permanent landing where you don't tell the Kerbal that, of course, but uh, he's not coming back. And the explosion that happened there, that was just the decoupler getting burnt up by the engines. Nothing major happened there. And as you can see, the slow expansion of our orbit outwards, as it gets larger, the orbit uh, expands further outwards exponentially. So it looks quite slow right now, but you have to keep an eye on it because we're almost finished with our um, thrust. There we go. And it's starting to go much quicker now. And with this, you can be a bit off with the uh, orbital predictions. So if you are a bit off, just if you're a bit under the orbit, just thrust a bit more. If you've gone a bit over, just thrust... Uh, in the opposite direction. I don't know what the I forgot what the exact term is. But there we go. As you can see, we've got a moon encounter. And I'm gonna try and warp forward to get closer to the moon because it's gonna take several hours to get out there. And at first the moon looks like it's not gonna catch us, but as we get close to the top of our orbit, we move slower and slower and slower, and the moon catches us up. And if any of this is moving too fast, feel free to pause the video and then uh, come back to it when you've gotten to where I am. So this was a fairly strange uh, trajectory I had here. Usually when you get a moon orbit, it's like a straight line just past the moon. Whereas this orbit um, turned out to fly directly into the moon, which was actually saved fuel, which was good. Here we go, I'm just warping a bit forward. And we've got our moon encounter. There you can see our orbit changes uh, quite differently. It never actually looks like the uh, game predicts it well because your orbit completely changes. And as you can see, we're on a trajectory directly for the moon. But to make it a bit easier to land on, what I like to do is I like to almost get rid of all my velocity so that you fall straight down to the planet and it's much easier because you don't have to uh, negate uh, horizontal vectors or anything. It's just a 
vertical drop. So that's what I'm doing with that maneuver node there, reducing my speed so that I drop directly down onto the planet at that point. And at this point, all I have to do is warp up and we'll get much closer to the moon. As you can see, I lost track of it there, only for it to appear right in front of me. And all I really have to do here is uh, fire. I think it's retrograde. Yeah, it's retrograde, and uh, that'll slow me down enough to fall down to the planet, and I will have enough fuel if you look at the fuel in the bottom left. I'm going to have enough fuel to land, but not necessarily to get back. You probably could, but I haven't tested it. And what you might be thinking right now is that the uh, the moon looks very dark, and that's because I'm landing on the dark side of the moon. And in a minute or two, I'm going to switch over recordings to show me landing on the light side of the moon. Now, you can land on the dark side of the moon, but I would only recommend it if you're fairly experienced or if you just want a thrill, I guess. But if you're just looking for an easy first moon landing, I would definitely recommend landing on the light side of the moon. And as you can see here, I'll be, sh be showing... Um, that I did land on the dark side of the moon, but it is so pitch black you couldn't see anything in the recording when I watched it back, so I had to switch over to a light side of the moon recording. Now my first ever moon landing was actually at night, and I didn't do it my way. I didn't do it this way, the easy way, where you basically just drop down. I did it where you fly in at an angle, and that was before they had sort of the autopilot type features added in, and it was so difficult. But I think it's made all the moon landings now much easier and as you can see now i've switched to the light side of the moon recording i'm falling down to the surface and it's just much easier for um whoever's doing it but it's also much better for the viewer because the recording was just a pitch black screen for most of it so as you can see i've deployed my landing legs early just because you don't want to forget when you're really close to the ground so i just like to do it early and there's no atmosphere that's going to damage them or anything so you just want to let yourself fall for the first while because if you just keep stopping or if you keep reducing your velocity, it's just going to waste fuel and it's going to take you ages to get down. But the one tip I do have with the altitude is the moon, when you're landed on the ground, reads an average of 3,000. So you might be like, oh, I'm 4,000 meters above the ground, but you're not. You're only 1,000, sometimes less if you've landed at the, like the top lip of a crater. However, in the crater, sometimes it goes down to like 2,500, it can be less, but just as an average, the, um, the ground level is 3,000 meters. And as you can see here, I'm just decreasing my velocity a little bit because I don't want to get caught off guard. And it's better to have a gentle velocity of about 100 coming in from 10,000 meters above than 400, even though I'm doing that right now or uh, my speed isn't, is quite quick. So here we go, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I landed in a crater, but um, that doesn't really matter too much. Craters are difficult because when you land on the sides of them, your craft can tip over, so it's preferable to land on either the very center of a crater or not in a crater at all. But I didn't really have too much choice here, although I could have changed it slightly. All right, and I'm just doing a very, very slow burn here, just to, to keep my speed about how it is or slowly decrease it. And what I did here with the autopilot is, um, I was gonna switch it over to manual because if you keep it on um, retrograde, it always slightly tries to vector itself and, and it wiggles around and it wastes a bit of fuel. But if you're not really too bothered about that, just keep it on the autopilot. Because when you keep it on the retrograde, It'll, it'll reduce um, horizontal velocity and vertical velocity, and it's almost like a landing autopilot when you're landing on a planet, and it's very good. I quite like it. And one of the best ways to judge how close you are is by your shadow, which I'm showing right here. You can see my shadow coming in, because you might not think you're close, but those rocks um, are a good indication as well. So yeah, I'm just doing a very, very gentle um, thrust here, just to keep my velocity low enough that I can land. And you probably, the ideal speed to land is probably about one meter a second, but I think you can do it at five, although you will bounce. 
well in theory you can do it at any speed that your legs can withstand but you really don't want to risk it after spending so long getting something out here especially if it's a much larger ship and not just a stock ship okay and here we are we're coming down here we got that lovely uh space music going on and touchdown no touchdown there we go and we're not really on a slanted slope because I landed directly in the center of the crater. And I'm just going to put my ladder down here and have one of my guys go on a nice spacewalk and maybe plant a flag. So I did, I did really enjoy uh, making the second part of this series. I think I do like the series as a whole. I'm not 100% sure what my next video will be. It might be a uh, like a Minimus video. Or perhaps Juno. Because Juno is probably the next step to go anywhere in KSP. Yeah. Um, if you did like the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me what you want to see next. Um, any specific games? Because I, I could do quite a few different things. Um, and also feel free to check out my Twitch channel because I've been trying to stream a bit more. And yeah, uh, have a nice day out there when you're flying in the skies. Goodbye.